Hello there, Wallolo Warriors. It is my pleasure to bring to you today a video about an upcoming release of an expansion for Age of Empires 2. It is called the Portuguese Civ mod, and it is an unofficial expansion created by D Software. It's going to be released very, very soon. Um, there is no exact date yet, I believe, as this project is still in the beta. But you can download it from their website and find out more information about this proje uh, project from the description below this video. And uh, you can find all about that underneath there. So follow that link after you've watched this video. And this Civ mod is, uh, well, it started, I believe, as a very humble beginning. Uh, Portuguese Civ Mod 2 is the successor to an already existing mod for Age of Empires. And that, of course, is Portuguese Civ Mod 1. Now, the very first Portuguese Civ Mod um, is available for anyone to download and play right now. This is the um, add-on to that. or it's, In fact, I don't even think you could call it an add-on. It's all a, a almost revamped version of that mod. Now, the Portuguese Civ Mod, as the name might suggest, adds an extra civilization to the game. And that, of course, would be the Portuguese, which I am now playing as here. And I've set this game to the Imperial Age so I can show you guys some of the features and some of the awesome things that it adds. But Portuguese Civ Mod 2, um, it, it takes it above and beyond, adding so many new things, so many new features. Um, it truly does feel like a whole expansion to Age of Empires 2, and it's absolutely phenomenal what they've been able to do. Uh, there's just tons of stuff, and hopefully I'll cover a bunch of it in this video, but I don't want to give it all away because I still want you guys to go out and explore this mod for yourselves and see exactly what it has to offer when it is available. So let's start off by uh, having a look at one of the, uh, a couple of new changes. So first of all, at the very top of the screen, you'll notice there's actually a new resource. That's right, this resource right here is experience, a whole new resource added into the game. Now experience works very similar to that in Age of Empires 3, where experience is gained when you do things, when you build things, when you train things, and I even believe when you kill things, so I'm not 100% on that one. Um, and experience allows you um, to spend experience at a special building, which is the trade workshop. And we'll build this now just to show you exactly how it works. And like I say, I'll take things easy. I'm not going to show you everything, but I do want to do things one thing at a time and cover a little bit of everything that's up for grabs. Whilst that's being built, actually, we'll talk about the scout. Um, you might notice this is a scout cavalry, but it's actually got a completely new skin. It's completely revamped, and uh, they've actually added a new unit in for the scout, replacing the old scout. Out, and this scout has basically no attack. It's unable to attack things um, initially. Now, obviously, we've started this game in the Imperial Age, so it does have an attack bonus, uh, attack strength bonus. But um, the old scout is now renamed to the Pathfinder, but we'll see that a little later on. Um, so this is the trade workshop, right? And this thing allows us to spend experience, which, as you can see, if I build a house, I believe we'll get some experience for that. Uh, we've got 300 right now. And if we build a house, we should get a couple more. Um, so experience we can spend inside of the trade workshop. This allows us to um, get more units or different units that we couldn't already get. And this mod adds a ton of units to the game. I'm not sure how many there are, but I believe there's over 100 new units and buildings in total. So there is just tons and tons of stuff to explore. We'll build a couple here. We'll build a Lancer and we'll build a Conscript Bowman and a Conscript as well. Now, unfortunately, it didn't seem like we got any experience for building that house there. Uh, perhaps a new TC will do the trick and we'll queue a couple up as well. All right, so there you go. A Lancer, just to show that off. Um, pretty quick, nice, uh, fast unit. Really lovely graphics as well. And uh, a lot of these graphics are completely brand new graphics that uh, are done by the design team. Now, some of the units are similar to this, which is a conscript bowman, which is essentially a, a hunting villager, and the conscript, which is like a, a villager with a spear. So perhaps a little difficult to tell these guys apart, but still, uh, there's just tons and tons of new stuff. You might notice as well the siege tower is available here, which is really cool. Um, this was also added in AOF, but the siege tower is also um, used in this game, where you can obviously build it from the trade workshop here. Uh, also, on the second page, for some reason we're not actually getting experience it seems from building stuff. I'm not sure if that's tech, like 
I don't know. We'll have a look at that in a bit. Uh, but you can also send resources. So you can actually send crates of resources for ex uh, for experience, which is awesome. Uh, you get special upgrades, which give you um, eco bonuses and things like that. So look at that. You get uh, hunters work faster, um, farmers and foragers work faster just by spending that experience, which is obviously gained over time passively. So next up, I want to show you another huge thing that they've added in this mod, and that is the tavern. Now, the tavern is awesome. It allows you to recruit mercenaries, so units that only cost gold. And so that that's kind of unusual. Um, you don't actually really get that in AoE 2 at all. Nothing just costs gold. And again, I think this is inspired from Age of Empires 3, which obviously allows you to um, send mercenaries from your home city. Obviously, there's no home city here, but these two buildings kind of work together to give that kind of feel. As you can see, when we built that building, the experience did go up. So it doesn't seem like you get experience for every single building, but we're going to go ahead and build the standard buildings here and just see uh, what is available and how, what experience we can get for building them. So obviously, then the tavern here allows us to hire mercenaries, costing only gold. And uh, I think each civilization has different mercenaries available to it. And so obviously we're playing as the new Civ, the Portuguese here. But there are also uh, mercenaries available for all of the other original Civs and the other new Civs that have been added as well. So here we can hire things like the Swiss Pikeman, the Zweihander, the Italian Infantry, the Winged Hussar. And uh, this is just a few of the units available. We'll take a look at the tech tree shortly to show you the extent of the things in this mod. So there's the Swiss Pikeman there looking fantastic in all of his glory. So experience then clearly gained by building these buildings here. And unfortunately, I can't show you the Pathfinder right now, but we'll keep building some buildings. Um, thanks for the wood, my ally. I, <laughs> I'm so lame. I set the ally to my, uh, I set the enemy to, well, the other guy to be my ally. Yeah. So um, I want to kind of demonstrate this here. Uh, when we get 500 experience, I want to demonstrate you the crates of food coming in. Uh, but this is really, really nice. I love this little aspect, and I think it's going to add so many interesting play styles um, to play using mercenaries it's it's a really unique concept i love this graphic as well the winged hussar just look at that now uh, that looks just insane it's so cool so we've got 590 experience we're gonna go ahead and send some resources okay so we'll send a pile of wood and uh, that will contain 250 wood when that arrives i'll show you exactly how it works but um yeah, I do think some of these values need changing a little bit. I'm, I'm unsure, to be honest with you. Um, I think balancing this kind of thing is going to be really difficult because the sheer number of things added does make balancing quite tough. So obviously, as you can tell as well, this uh, architecture set does look a little bit strange, doesn't it? It looks a little different. Well, that's because there is a new architecture set added as well, as you can see here on the Portuguese. And I do believe this architecture set is available for other sibs also. So currently everything else is roughly the same as we're used to. There's no new buildings aside from what I've shown you so far. And of course here at the trade workshop, you can see that's that pile of wood there, which gets spawned next to it. And then villagers can go and gather, which is really cool. I like that a lot. And obviously makes things really interesting and definitely feels very AOE 3-esque. So, continuing with the huge amount of things that this adds, also bear in mind how quickly these villagers gather from this. Look at that, it's just going down insanely fast. It's a very quick injection of resources into your economy. Obviously, I'm playing in deathmatch though, so we can have all, the, um, all of the resources available to us. Um, so, another huge thing, a huge thing that this mod adds, and that is the addition of a new age. It adds a fifth age as well, the Renaissance age. And that basically takes you from the Imperial Age into the Age of uh, Cannons and the Age of Musket Men, which makes things really interesting because obviously we've never gone past the Imperial Age before. What could this new age give us? Well, we're going to find out fairly shortly once our uh, TC has researched that. Another interesting thing that you can do at the town center is actually... Um, call a Minutemen, which uh, is this tech here. It's called Two Arms, and it calls a handful of levies to repel an attack. It's essentially Minutemen from AoE 3, and you click it, and you get a bunch of dudes here, uh, six of them, 
who are going to decay in health over time. But they do have a little bit of attack. Uh, they have two more than a villager, as you can see, and a little bit more armor as well. Um, so they obviously are going to be useful to you if, for instance, you know, you're caught out of position off guard. You can quickly get these six units who are going to eventually die off to repel an attack. And I believe um, that you could only do that once. But I, again, I may be wrong. I'm not 100% familiar with this. Um, but that's, I, I think, really cool. Um, certainly adds more elements to the game. Also, also it's kind of funny because she's holding a fishing net. What's she going to do? Just like trap them in her net while the others maul them to death. Either way, they'll die off in just a moment, as you'll see. And uh, meanwhile, we're researching the Renaissance Age. I guess what I'll do is I'll queue a few more of these units up so you can see what's uh, what's good with these guys. And obviously, we'll have a look at the text as well. Uh, heroes become stronger. Humanism. Which leads us to yet another feature of this mod, which is heroes. You can actually get a hero, and each civilization gets a unique hero. So that's it. We've made it to the Renaissance age, and we have awesome new graphics for most of the buildings here, which looks insane. And we can, of course, go ahead and get things such as cannons and the like. But we will first do some technologies. Chemistry is obviously going to be a prerequisite to most of those things. Um, notice here as well, we get other stuff. Military Academy, a new text for the Renaissance Age. Infantry get bonus HP and melee armor. Quite expensive, but plus 10 HP and plus 2 melee on your infantry. I like that. Um, we get things here, camel archers, which cost a mixture of gold and experience, which is kind of interesting. Um, here you get wedge formation, which gives your cavalry extra attack. Now, I'm interested to see if that actually unlocks the wedge formation, which I highly doubt. But if it did, I would be absolutely blown away. But anyway, chemistry is about to complete. But before that is done, our castle here, we're going to be able to train a hero. A hero costs 1,000 500 experience so we we better get some more experience i think and we'll build a bank first of all um again i think another thing perhaps inspired by aoe3 and we'll build a couple more buildings here just to make sure we get the uh, experience to build the hero unit um so let's see we've researched chemistry we come back over to the siege workshop and suddenly we've got all of these guns that's right we got guns guys Field guns, culverins, howitzers, multi-barreled cannons. Yes, please. I'll have one of each. A mortar as well, which also costs experience, so I won't build that just yet. And um, just so much cool stuff going on here. All right, so the bank. What does the bank do? Well, the bank generates gold over time. As you can imagine, if you're in the Renaissance age, you've you you the game is quite late. The gold might be running out, especially in a 1v1. And this building makes it interesting in the late game because you're not just relying on relics in a 1v1. You can also use the bank to generate gold passively and then have your villagers gather from it. They just, you know, they're going to mine away at those really valuable bricks on that wall and uh, they'll sell them on the black market but gold can be generated and of course you can use economics uh, which is a tech here to basically give you more gold over time and I believe there is a limit to how many banks you can build as well um, and that tech allows you to build more to get more gold over time of course. So now we have 1720 experience we can go ahead here and create the hero. Now this can only be, you only have one hero and each civilization has a different hero. He takes quite a while to train, uh, but he's really cool because he is a buff. He regenerates over time and he is generally just awesome. Of course, if we go back to the trade workshop here, you'll see that we have got more units available. We've got Crusaders, Grape Shot Guns, which are going to be great for mowing down infantry, for instance. You've got a Foot Knight here. On the next page, uh, I think that's the same as before. And if we go back to the Tavern, um, you can see that the Mercs haven't changed here either, actually. So, no new Mercs in the Renaissance Age. But, I mean, who needs new Mercs? We've already got, like, so many right here. So, these cannons take forever to train, as you can probably see. Wow, that's a pretty swag looking scout right there. <laughs> I have no idea what that's going on. Uh, conscription obviously going to be a very valuable research in the uh, Renaissance age, I feel. These cannons, although they're very strong, yes, they are taking a long time to train and they are very, very expensive as well. 
Unfortunately, right now, we have nothing to attack since I set this guy to my ally so I could show you these things without having my ass beaten to the ground. But I will demonstrate these guys firing in a moment's time. Uh, well, in another situation, we'll we'll set up a custom scenario. So here's our hero, Alfonso, a Alfonso, sorry, the first, which is the Portuguese hero. And you can tell he's a hero by the big star shape underneath his base. He's really very strong, 350 health, 8 plus 3 attack, 5 base armor on pierce and melee. He is really very strong. And I believe there are techs that allow you to upgrade your hero and make them stronger as well. Um, I'm not 100% sure. I do remember, I, I think there was one here. Yeah, humanism, which makes your hero stronger as well. So these guys could be upgraded, made really strong. The blacksmith upgrades, of course, will affect them also. Uh, talking of blacksmith upgrades, we should see if there are actually blacksmith upgrades for the Renaissance Age. I'm pretty sure there are. And uh, also, for the um, Portuguese, we do get a special unit, the Arcupiusir. I don't know how to pronounce it, so I, I just say it like that. Um, the Arcubusia is a, a buffed up hand cannon effectively, unique to the Portuguese. And also I guess I'll show you the Portuguese unique unit which is the Hinete and uh, this thing is basically a uh, javelin throwing cavalry. It's good against cavalry and very effective against camels. So there he goes in all his might, in all his glory. Um, he looks pretty awesome. He looks pretty swag, let's be honest. Okay, so blacksmith is up and here you can see we actually get special techs for the Renaissance Age as well. Bayonets here, allowing your spearmen to have plus one attack. And it goes on, it goes on, and it goes on. If I was to cover everything in this mod, we'd be here for years. But there are still more things. Uh, there are still many more things. Unfortunately, um, actually no, I think I, I think I can demonstrate this actually. Um, so basically, uh, mortar. It costs 400 gold and 400 experience. Now. You might be thinking, oh, what are these villagers doing? I think they're, uh, I think the banks ran out of gold. Oh dear, guys, well, you got a, you got another job to do down here. You got a wonder to build, the Italian wonder. Now, I'm not sure what this wonder is, but just for the sake of saving time, we'll do Aegis here and build that immediately. Now, that wonder there is uh, pretty interesting because although it serves the purpose of a standard wonder, which is to activate a wonder victory. Other than that, wonders don't really have a purpose um, in a normal game. Only this time, wonders do have a purpose. If you muster enough resources to build a wonder, you get a bonus, you get a benefit. And that benefit, in the case of these guys, in case of the Portuguese, reduces the cost of a mortar to 200 gold and 200 experience. If you remember back a moment ago, the mortar cost was 400 gold and 400 experience. So that wonder there is unique to the Portuguese in the sense it's a unique wonder. And it's also unique in the sense of the effect that it gives as well. And each civilization um, that is in this in this mod has a unique wonder power, which can be found in the... Um, I don't think it's shown in the tag tree, but I think it can be found in the manual. So we'll have a quick look at the tech tree anyway, because we can have a, a good idea of what is also available here. Um, obviously, this is the Portuguese that we're looking at right now, and the Portuguese are a naval and gunpowder sieve. Um, I actually neglected to show you the dock, so we can go back and do that in a moment. Um, but basically, we start with two scouts, we get the uh, Arcabusia upgrade for free, our archers fire faster, yada yada. Basically, all of that good stuff. And there you go, you can see the wonder power as well. All old artillery have no minimum range and they cost half. And that's pretty awesome. So we can have a quick look through the sieves in a moment, but let's quickly first look at the tech tree because you can see here um, all of these units tend to have a, an upgrade more in the Renaissance Age. So your Arbalest go, gets upgraded to an Imperial Arbalest. Your Arcabusia upgrades from Hand Cannon. Um, let's see, your Halberdier can be upgraded to Imperial Halberdier. Your Hussar, Imperial Hussar, Heavy Camel, Imperial Camel, so on, so on, so forth. And uh, the Portuguese Navy is pretty solid actually as well. Um, you get these special um, Units Ship of the Line, which is a huge broadside firing ship, which we can show you in a moment. And they also get Caravels, which is an attack ship that can carry units, which is pretty sweet. So if we keep going along, keep going along, um, <laughs> there's just so many things. 
available more text more of everything uh, just look at the the trade workshop all of the things you can do there uh, obviously some of these units are not available to us as the portuguese but would be available to other civs if we keep going along there's the tavern and as you can see we only have eight units available to us but there's so many in total um unique units to different civilizations how cool is that? If we keep going along or keep going along, you see the siege workshop's been extended out. Um, the university has so many new texts as well, like physics and foundries and uh, astronomy. Really interesting stuff. And this just adds so much depth and so much more to the base game. I don't think anyone can just pick this up and just be like, right, we're going to do it and, and understand this. It's, it's very, very deep and very awesome at the same time. So we spoke about how the Portuguese were initially added in the Portuguese Civ mod. Well, PCM2 doesn't just add the Portuguese, it also adds the Berbers, the Aragonese, it adds the Castilians, and it also adds, I believe there was one more, um, am I missing them? The Moors, there you go. So it also adds the Moors, so, uh, <coughs> sorry. A bunch of new civilizations as well so we'll quickly just take a very quick look at some of these guys and you can see each one of these wonder powers are, is different so for the, for the moors the monks regenerate their faith instantly which is pretty cool uh, the chinese scorpions fire three arrows uh, the huns all military units except um, siege and ships deal plus eight attack versus buildings. Imagine that with the Atarkans. That would be insane. And I, obviously there's a lot here. And I, would, I don't want to show this all in the video because I want you guys to go out and get this and see for yourselves. So real quick, we will have a quick look at the, um, the dock. It's just, uh, oh, what wrong thing. Making some scouts there by accident. Um, and there you go. Oh, wait, that's another thing I just remembered. The scout here. Let me just show you real quick on the tech tree. The scout as we know it, the old scout, has been renamed to a pathfinder. So at the start of the game, you start with a scout, which is this guy, and he cannot attack. So that basically means that you can't uh, use him in a scout rush, for instance. You have to build a stable and make pathfinders. So uh, on the water, I wanted to show you this real quick before we show a demonstration of these cannons and stuff. Uh, I want to show you this because there's quite a, a, a few things added here. Obviously, we all we have the ship of the line, which we'll find somewhere in here. Where is he? Where is he? Is he, uh, is he upgraded from... There we go, ship of the line there. So that's um, a massive ship, basically. Good range. It fires from the broad side, unlike any ship in AoE, which is really cool. And also, I want to show you the Caravel, because the Caravel is, uh, again, like I say, an attack ship, but it can carry units, which is really cool, because obviously there's nothing like that that exists in AoE at the moment. Your transport ships are very weak and unable to attack back, unable to fight. Um, so it's a multi-purpose, very cool ship. But the other really awesome thing on the water is the addition of the Builder ship. That's right. Builder ship. You heard. And uh, you can build a bunch of stuff with this guy, allowing you to build structures on the water. Yeah, that's right. On the freaking water. There you go. How about some walls on there? How about a gate on there as well? Why not? Why not have some of that? Why not build a freaking lighthouse while we're at it? Yeah, let's do that. Build a ship, guys. Build a fishery. I don't actually know what a fishery does. I've not seen this one before, but I love it. Actually, I have no idea what the fishery does. Maybe it's just... Oh, interesting. I wonder if... Anything to do with a fishing ship, maybe? Uh, I don't know, actually. I don't know. Um, it seems like the fishing ship is able to build these things as well, which I assume is a bug right now. Bear in mind, this is still in beta, guys. Uh, actually, no. It's not bugged. It just it doesn't allow you to do it with the fishing ship. So there you go. How cool is that? I, I still don't know what this fishery thing does, but I like it. I li I'm, actually, I'm wondering... Let's have a real quick look at this. Can you put villagers on it? Is that possible to unload villagers onto there? If that was the case, then you could put... Okay, no, you can't. Okay, never mind. I was just... I I, I don't know what this thing does. I'm, in, I'm very curious about that now. I'll have to ask uh, ask one of the guys working on this. But how awesome is that? You could, you could literally build yourself, like, you know... Um, a safe dock area. Maybe this is overpowered, but this is the kind of thing that people have been asking for for years. Like so many people have just been asking, "Oh, can we can we build on water? Can we do like uh, you know sea walls and things?" 
Now you can with the Portuguese Civ Mod 2. I mean, insane stuff right there. Maybe a little overpowered, but to be honest with you, in my opinion, this is not aimed at the serious players. This is not aimed at competitive play. This mod, to me, is aimed at those who just want to have fun. And I tell you what, the sheer number of stuff that this mod adds just gives you so many boundless, unlimited opportunities for so many different unit combinations, so many different things, and ultimately just so much fun. At the end of the day, this mod is all about fun, and I tell you what, it adds just so much. I love it. I absolutely love it. So it's insane. And uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to show a demonstration of these uh, of these guns attacking. We're going to show you what they sound like. Um, we're going to show you how they how they look. And obviously, we're going to have a quick look at their stats as well. Um, pretty interesting stuff. So let's go back to the menu here. Okay, so hopefully you're still with me at this point. Um, so just to have a, a, a quick example of just how many things there are. As you can see, if we just scroll down in this list, there are just just tons of stuff. Just It's endless, boundless. But what we want to do really here is have a quick look at the guns. Um, I'm going to have to find them because there's just so many. Uh, let's see. Obviously, we want to go up to field gun as an example. Uh, I'll tell you what, these guys, I've heard them. They sound awesome. Um, let's have a look. The Oh, there's an explosive card. That's quite cool as well. I don't know where you get that from, but we'll have a look at that in action. Um, I I think uh, the culver in there you go, that's one. I wanted to get a look at the the one that does lots, the, the grape shotgun. That's the, that's the badger. Where's the grape shotgun? There it is. And what we'll do here real quick is we'll put some walls down for player two. We'll put some fortified walls in. One, two, three, four. Just to so you can see what's going on. We'll give him a, a unit as well. We'll just, there you go, put that there so he can't move. And then we'll test this just to have a quick look. Okay, so, oh, thank you very much, Philip the Second. He wants to have a nice game. Well, unfortunately for him, his walls are going to get blasted. So have a quick listen to this. Um, we'll first have a look at the explosive cart, actually. This looks really cool. I just imagine it's like a petard, but awesome. It, wow. 2,000 damage to that wall with 100 attacks. So I guess a huge, huge attack bonus against buildings, right? All right, so the Culver in. Wow. Holy shit. That is a satisfying sound right there. And what about the field gun? Let's have a look here. Okay, nice. I like it. And finally, the grape shotgun. Okay, similar, similar sound. A little different and I think uh, there's a, a bunch of different sounds for all of the guns, but absolutely awesome I mean, could you imagine? Um, in fact, you know what? Why do we need to imagine? We're in the scenario editor. Let's just do it Let's just throw a bunch of um, I don't know just for the hell of it guys Let's just throw a bunch of spearmen at these and just see how they do <laughs> because I want to I, this is the thing right this is the this is the kind of mod right here that just adds so much so many questions you just like you just want to do it just do it so let's see what happens with these guys is do they does it mow them down well it does do quite a bit of damage oh my god did you see that the explosions on them okay pretty awesome I think they're pretty strong as well actually 120 health 120 health Obviously, their weakness here is the, the spearmen are too strong, chasing them down. They're uh, they're out of minimum attack range. I think we need ballistics on these guys as well. But yeah, awesome stuff, awesome stuff. And I want you guys to check this out because it is uh, it is so cool. So uh, awesome, and hopefully you guys are uh, excited by this. I think it's got so much potential. Like I say, um, I think the best way to really discover this is just by downloading it. And playing it and right at the start of the video I said that the link is down below it's not available just yet but it should be available to download in the next couple of weeks you can keep up to date like I say with the link down below on the PCM website so thank you very much for watching guys hopefully you enjoyed this video and, and hopefully I covered everything in a good way but thank you for watching and I will see you guys next time